So section four, I'm hoping it's a really, eight four is really a nice section. It's on matrix, it says algebra, maybe really matrix arithmetic. And with matrices, um, we can use matrices um, to solve systems of equations um, using determinants or using the RREF feature uh, on our calculator. Um, in this section, we're not going to be solving for x, we're not going to be solving for y. There's no systems of equations that are associated with the matrices in this section. These are just generic matrices that are just, just a table of numbers. They don't stand for equations. This doesn't stand for 3x plus 2y equals 0. These are just generic matrices. We could calculate the determinants of some of them that are square matrices, but we're not even going to do that. We're going to do a few operations, and the first few problems are asking us to do scalar multiplication. In scalar multiplication, is just multiplying each number or each entry. I'll just say multiplying each number in the matrix by the same number. So the first four problems are written um, with symbols and numbers, and the number is the scalar. The number is what I'm supposed to multiply each number in the matrix by. Problem two says 5B, and up top it says matrix B is a matrix 4, 5, 1, 2. So this problem could be rewritten. I can replace the B with the matrix that it's equal to, 4, 5, and 1, 2. And then to do the scalar multiplication, I'm just going to multiply every number by 4. I'm going to go by 5. I'm going to go 5 times 4 and get 20. 5 times 5 and get 25. 5 times 1 and get 5. And 5 times 2 and get 10. I'll show you how to do this on your calculator in a second, but I'll do number. Um, part E real or number four real quickly. Four says take negative four and multiply it by the matrix called out by matrix E. Matrix E is negative three, two, two, five, negative one, three. And I'm just gonna go through and multiply every entry by negative four. So I'm gonna go negative four times negative three and get positive twelve. Negative four times negative times positive 2 and get negative 8. Another negative 4 times positive 2 and get another negative 8. And then negative 4 times 5 and get a negative 20. This is a negative 20. Negative 4 times negative 1 is positive 4. And negative 4 times positive 3 is negative 12. Those are the answers for 2 and 4. Um, hardly worth doing these on my calculator, but they can be done on my calculator and there's going to be some problems in this section where when we get to the test, you'll be allowed to do it on your calculator. And they're kind of a nuisance to do by hand. So I'm going to um, enter all these matrices on my calculator real quickly because I think these are the matrices that I use for every single problem in this section. There isn't, yeah, all the way. There's only 20, uh, 24 problems in this section and they all use the same matrices. So I'm going to enter these matrices um, all at once in my calculator. The first matrix, it has two rows and two columns. So I'm going to enter it as a two by two matrix. And let me get, and I'm going to call it matrix A. So on my calculator to get matrix A, and we've done that, we go second and then hit the X inverse matrix key, arrow over to edit, and it's right on matrix A. I'm going to hit enter on A like we've done a few times. Type 2, enter, 2, enter. And let's enter the numbers. Negative 2, enter, 4, enter, 3, enter, 1, enter. I look at the matrix. It's called matrix A. I see negative 2, 4, 3, and 1. Good enough. I'm done entering that matrix. I'm going to second and quit, or second in mode, to get out of that screen. 
Next, I'm going to enter matrix B on my calculator. That's another 2 by 2 matrix because it has two rows and two columns. I'm going to enter it essentially the same way. I'm going to go second and the X inverse matrix key. I'm going to arrow over twice to edit. But this time before I hit enter, I'm going to cursor down to B. Your things, um, your other matrices may have different dimensions than mine. Doesn't matter what they have. If, if they don't even have anything in them, it doesn't matter. Get your edit and your two highlighted and then hit enter. And now I'm going to type two, enter, two, enter, and then just enter four, five, one, and two. Oop, four, five, one, and two. Make sure your matrix is, is you know exactly correct. Otherwise, you can't get your calculator to get the right answer. And then second and quit. For matrix C, it has three rows, row one, row two, and row three. So that gives it a three by something matrix. And it has three columns, column one, column two, and column three. It's rows first, column second. That's a three by three matrix. I'm going to enter this on my calculator. Same basic strategy, hitting second in the X inverse key, arrowing over twice to edit, now arrowing down twice to get the edit in the right-hand column highlighted and the C in the left-hand column highlighted. And I hit enter and I'm just going to type 3 by 3 and just enter up the numbers. And then double check to make sure I have them right because if I'm going to use my calculator to get answers, they have to be in right. Once you have the matrix in, you second and quit. Next matrix is another 3x3 three three matrix. It has three rows and three columns. I'm going to put that in matrix D. So second X inverse key over twice to edit. Now down to option D, which is number four. So I have edit in the right column and four in the bottom column or left column. And then type in 3x3. Three three. Make sure you enter it right. Seems good. The next matrix, matrix E, it has two rows going that way is the first row. There's the second row, so it's going to be a two by something. And it has one, two, three columns. So it's going to be a two by three matrix. I'm going to enter that one up by going second matrix edit in the right hand column, E in the left hand column, hit enter, type two, enter, three, enter and then just enter all the numbers that are there. Once you get the numbers in, double check them to make sure they're right. Then second quit. Then the last matrix F, it has row one, row two, row three. So it's a three by something. And it has column one going that way and column two going that way. That's gonna be a three by two matrix. So to enter that, second and X inverse over to edit down to letter F. It's a three by two. I type one, negative two, five, two, six, and seven. So I have all my matrices in, second quit. Now, if I want it to do problem two and or four, I'm gonna do all of these essentially from the main screen. Um, I'm not gonna use any of the matrix math features in this section. So to do problem two, I'm gonna type the number five that's in the problem. And then I'm going to go to matrix names and not to math and not to edit. So next step is to go second matrix, leave my column in names and have names in B highlighted. And right next to the number five, it's going to put a B in a matrix symbol so I could tell it's multiplying five by the matrix B. And when I hit equals or enter, it gives me 20, 25, 5, and 10. To do negative four times E, I just type the negative and the bottom row of my calculator, then the number four, and then I hit second and the X inverse matrix key, least stay in the names column, go down to part five, number five for E. Then on my main screen, if I hit enter, that E is gonna be next to the four. So I'm gonna do scalar multiplication of negative four times matrix E. And when I hit enter, it gives me 12, negative eight, negative eight, negative 24, negative 12. Scalar multiplication really isn't worthy of your calculator. 
Um, but if you want to use your calculator to do it, that's fine. I could never tell if you didn't, if you used your calculator or not, because you should be able to do scalar multiplication. You should be able to go from the problem to the answer without having to write anything but the answer. The next two problems are going to be matrix addition. And it's going to be important that for matrix addition, only matrices that have exactly the same dimensions can be added together. And to add matrices, you just add the piece, the like components. To add matrices, we'll add the numbers in the same position. I don't know if this is the best um, explanation, but when I start doing this by hand, it'll be really clear what I mean. So if, the mat if two matrices don't have the same dimensions, they can't be added. If they have the same dimensions, they can be added, and you add them by adding the components in the like places. So on my next page, I'm going to do number 6, which is C plus D. I'm going to write this without the letters. So I'm going to write in place of C the matrix that it's equal to. It's a 3 by 3 matrix. The top row is 1, 0, negative 1. The second row is 7, 2, and 4. The last row is 2, 3, and negative 5. Then I'm going to write the plus sign. And then in place of the D, I'm going to write what D is equal to. 3, 2, 0, 4, negative 1, 3, 1, negative 5, and 6. Because these are the same dimensions, they can be added. So to add these, I'm going to add the numbers in the same spot. In the upper left, I'm going to add the 1 and the 3 that are in the upper left. And in my answer for number 6, in the upper left, I'm going to put the number 4. And then I'm going to add the 0 and the 2, which is this 0 in the upper middle and that 2. And 0 plus 2 is going to give me 2. I'll write that in my answer. To end up my top row, I'm going to add negative 1 and 0. And those add up to be negative 1. Now I'm going to move down to the second row. In the second row, I'm going to add 7 and 4 because they're in the first position. And that's going to give me an 11. And then I'm going to add the 2 and the negative 1. But because they have opposite signs, I'm really subtracting. 2 plus negative 1 is going to be positive 1. And then I'm going to add the 4 and the 3. And that's going to give me a 7. Move on to the bottom row. First thing in the bottom row, 2 plus 1. That's going to give me a 3 in my answer. And then 3 plus negative 5. Those numbers have opposite signs, so I have to subtract and take the sign of the larger. That will give me negative 2. And then lastly, negative 5 plus 6. Again, the numbers have opposite signs, and when the numbers have opposite signs, you subtract and take the sign of the larger, and that will give me a positive 1. That's my answer. Let me double check on my calculator. I'm only going to use the matrix names in this whole section. I'm not going to do matrix math, any of the DETs or RREFs. So to do this on my calculator, let me clear out that main screen. I'm going to go second matrix, leave the names highlighted. The first name I need to see is C. I have the C highlighted, then I hit enter. Then I'll type this plus key, and then I need to get matrix D. So I hit second matrix, go down and get four highlighted when the names in the D are highlighted, and hit enter. That looks enough like this problem other than it's signified that these C's and D's are matrices. I can tell they're matrices because they're in that square bracket. And now when I hit enter, I get 4, 2, negative 1, 11, 1, 7, 3, negative 2, 1. Feels perfect. They so should be able to do number 5.
7 and 8 are going to be a combination of scalar multiplication and matrix addition. You have to do multiplication before addition, just like regular um, arithmetic. So when I look at problem 8, it says take 2C plus matrix plus 6D. So first I have to find out what 2C is. And 2C I get by taking every entry in the C matrix and scalar multiplying it by 2. So 2C, I'm going to multiply each of these numbers by 2. Go 2, t two times 1 is 2. 2 times 0 is 0. 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. And then second row, 2 times 7 is 14. 2 times 2 is 4. 2 times 4 is 8. And last row, 2 times 2 is 4. 2 times 3 is 6. 2 times negative 5 is negative 10. So I've done the 2C of the 2C plus 6D part. Now I have to do the 6D. To do 6D, I'm going to write the number 6 next to the D matrix. And then I'm going to multiply every single number in the D matrix by 6. Scalar multiplication is easy. You just multiply every number in that matrix by that same number. So 6 times 3, 18. 6 times 2, 12. 6 times 0 is 0. 6 times 4 is 24. 6 times negative 1 is negative 6. 6 times that 3 is 18. 6 times that 1 is 6. 6 times negative 5 is negative 30. 6 times 6 is 36. Now regular addition. I've done the scalar multiplication. I did multiplication first. Now I'm going to do the addition. First I'm going to add up this 2 and that 18 because they're in the same position. And in my answer, the first number I'm going to put in the upper left hand corner of my answer is the number 20 because that 2 plus 18 is 20. Next I'm going to add 0 and 12 because they're in the same position and 0 and 12 is going to be 12. And in the last thing in the top row I'm going to add negative 2 plus 0 and negative 2 plus 0 is negative 2. Done with my top row, move on to my bottom row, middle row. I'm going to add 14 and 24. That's going to give me 38. And then I'm going to add 4, negative 6. But when you have opposite signs, you're really subtracting. 4 plus negative 6 is negative 2. And then I'm going to add 8 and 18. That'll give me 26. Move on to the bottom row. First thing in the bottom row, 4 plus 6. That's going to give me a 10. And then 6 plus negative 30. Opposite sign, so you're subtracting. That's going to give me a negative 24. And then lastly, negative 10 plus 36. Opposite sign, so I'm subtracting. And I'm going to get positive 26. Let me double check on my calculator that this is the right answer. So I'm going to enter 2C plus 6D on my main screen. Real easy to do. To get this done on my calculator, clear out the junk that's in there. Type the number 2. To get the C next to it, I go second matrix, stay in the names column, go down to C, and hit enter. There's my 2C. Now I'm going to type this plus sign and do 6, and then second matrix, go down to D, and hit enter. So I see 2 times matrix C plus 6 times matrix D, and I hit enter. I see 20, 12, negative 2. 38, negative 2, 26, 10, negative 24, 26, so my answer is perfect. The next problems have a combination of matrix subtraction with scalar multiplication. Matrix subtraction is basically identical to matrix addition. To do matrix subtraction, only matrices that have the same dimensions can be subtracted. And to subtract matrices, subtract the numbers in the same position. It's no different. Matri just like 
uh, addition and subtraction are noticeably different w without matrices. They're essentially the same with matrices. So any matrices that can be added can be subtracted just by subtracting the numbers in the same positions. It's a little bit harder because sometimes you might get some double negatives to, to mess you up. So, um, bleh. I like your problem. Let me change my problem. I don't feel like doing a big matrix. Let me change my problem 10 just for the moment to be, how about 6A minus 4B. Like yours, but bigger numbers. So um, I just didn't feel like doing another 3x3 three three matrix. So to do 6A, I have to do 6 times matrix A, which is negative 2, 4, 3, and 1. That's going to be 6 times negative 2 is negative 12. 6 times 4 is 24. 6 times 3 is 18. And 6 times 1 is 6. That's the 6a part. And it can get tricky with this minus sign. I'm going to leave the minus sign. And I'm going to find out what 4b is. So I'm going to not worry about the minus just yet. I'm going to only find 4b. And then I'll worry about the minus. I'm going to do the multiplication before the subtraction. And I'm keeping the minus away from the um, 4. So I'm, here I'm just going to go 4 times matrix B, which is 4, 5, 1, and 2. So I'm going to go 4 times 4, 4 times 5, 4 times 1, and 4 times 2. So I haven't done anything with the minus. Now I'll do my first subtraction. To subtract two matrices, they have to be the same sides. Here I'm going to go negative 12 minus 16 to get started. That's almost calculator worthy. Those numbers have the same signs. I should add them. But let me make sure I'm not messing up here. I'm going to go negative 12 minus 16. And in my answer to the new version of number 10, in the upper left-hand corner, I'm going to have the number negative 28. The next subtraction I'm going to do is 24 minus 20. I don't need my calculator to know that that's 4. And then I'll go down low. I'm going to go 18 minus 4. I don't need my calculator for that either. That's 14. And then the last one I need to do is 6 minus 8. I don't really need my calculator, but just to be safe, 6 minus 8 gives me negative 2. So my answer should be that. Let me check it. My calculator is so lovely for this checking. To do this on my calculator, I type 6, then second matrix, hit enter on A, and then minus 4, second, the X inverse matrix key, go down to B, hit enter. That's 6 times matrix A minus 4 times matrix B, hit enter. I see negative 28, 4, 14, negative 2. Perfect. There are other ways to, to handle this minus, but in the scalar multiplication subtraction problems, I like to hold off until I do actually the subtraction and keep that negative away from the scalar multiplication. There would be another way to get the right answer, but I think this is the cleanest way. For number 12, it asks me to do no scalar multiplication or no just straight addition. So it says 12 says take matrix B. 4, 5, 1, 2, plus matrix D, 3, 2, 0, 4, negative 1, 3, 1, negative 5, 6. If I look at my uh, instructions here, only the matrices that have the same dimensions can be added or subtracted. These don't have the same dimensions. This is a 2 by 2 matrix plus a 3 by 3 matrix. For number 12, the answer is they can't be added. So the matrices cannot be added. Because to be added, you have to have exactly the same dimensions. Let me show you what happens on my calculator when you get something that can't happen. Clear this out. I'm going to do matrix B, so second x inverse matrix key, go down under names for B and hit enter, then the plus sign, and then second matrix, arrow down to D and have the names in the D highlighted, hit enter. So this is going to try to add matrix B and matrix D, and when I hit enter, my calculator is going to give me an error message. 
and the error message says dimension mismatch. It means that the this is a two by two. It, this dimensions of this matrix is two by two. The dimensions of this matrix is three by three. That has a dimension mismatch, meaning they don't have the same dimension, so they can't be added. So I'm just going to hit second and quit, and know that my answer is, is good. For 14, 14 wants to take matrix E, which is negative 3, 2, 2, 5, negative 1, 3, and add it to matrix F, which is 1, negative 2, 5, 2, 6, 7. And this right here was a 2 by 3 matrix. It had 2 rows and 3 columns. And this is a 3 by 2 matrix. And 2 by th 2 rows and 3 columns is not the same as 3 rows and 2 columns. You can tell they don't look the same in terms of the dimension. So if the answer to 14, these also can't be added. And I'll get the same dimension mismatch if I try to do these on my calculator. So let me try to do 14 on my calculator. Clear out the main screen, second matrix, go down to E and hit enter. Type the plus sign, second matrix, go down to F and hit enter. So that looks enough like the problem and it signifies that I'm at trying to add matrices. When I hit enter, I'm going to get the same dimension mismatch error. And that tells me that that addition is not possible. So that's three of the four operations we can do with matrices. We can do scalar multiplication, we can do addition, and we can do subtraction. Matrices we don't have division for, but we have matrix multiplication. And matrix multiplication is defined bizarrely. I would never define matrix multiplication like it's defined. And quite honestly, I haven't done a lot with matrix multiplication ever. And I've got a master's in math. Uh, somebody must use it, but, but it's nothing I've ever seen. So. The last operation that we need to learn is matrix multiplication. And I'll say this. Two matrices, we'll, let's call them A and B, can be multiplied oh gosh in the order a times b provided the number of columns in matrix a is the same as the number of rows in matrix B. And they can be multiplied in the order B A, B times A, if the number of columns in matrix B equals the number of rows in matrix A. The bizarre thing about matrix multiplication, it's defined bizarrely, and in, and in top of being defined bizarrely, sometimes you can multiply A times B in that order, but B times A won't be possible. Sometimes you can multiply B times A, and even if A times B and B times A are possible, they're not always even going to be the same result. Matrix multiplication is bizarrely defined, and um, when we get to the test, if all you rely is on your calculator to do matrix multiplication, I'm completely content with that. I'll show you how to do every problem by hand.
but I really can't think of a time, uh, maybe an abstract algebra, which is like math 500 and something. I, I did matrix multiplication, but, but I can't foresee you needing matrix multiplication. So if you need to rely on your calculator, that's fine. So let me show you how to do 15 and 16. In 15, matrix A is a two by two matrix, so it has two columns. columns, that's supposed to say. And matrix B is also a 2 by 2 matrix. It has two rows. Whoa. And in order to do multiplication of A times B, in order to do AB, the number of columns in matrix A has to equal the number of rows in matrix B. So for AB to be possible, the column, the number of columns in A have to equal the number of rows in B. And that's the case here because B has two rows, A has two columns. So this matrix multiplication is possible. Let me show you the bizarre way it's defined. To do matrix A, this will be number 15, to do matrix A times matrix B, in place of A, I'm going to write negative 2, 4, 3, and 1. That's not bizarre. And in place of B, I'm going to write 4, 5, 1, and 2. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the first row of matrix A and write it as a column and write it next to each of the columns in matrix B. So for my answer, the top row of my answer is going to be gotten by using the top row of matrix A. I'm going to write the top row as a column. I'm going to write negative 2 and 4. I'm going to put a time sign and I'm going to put it next to the first column in matrix B and I'm going to put it next to the second column in matrix B. So I took this and I put it next to each of the columns. So I took that, wrote it as a column, put it next to each column in B, and now I'm going to multiply. I'm going to go negative 2 times 4 is negative 8. Negative 4 times 1 is positive 4. And I'm going to add those, but because they have different signs, I'm going to subtract them and get negative 4. In my answer, the upper left-hand number in the top row is going to be negative 4. Done with the um, first set here, I'm going to move on to the next set. I, this negative 2 times 4 turned into that 5, 2. So I wrote this vertically next to that. Now I'm going to go 2 times 5 is 10. 4 times 2 is 8. I'm going to add those numbers. That's going to go in the top row of my answer. There's going to be an 18 in the top row of my answer. I'm completely done with the top row of my answer, and I'm done with the top row of A. I'm going to move now on to the bottom row of A. Haven't done anything with that 3, 1. I'm going to do the same thing with the 3, 1, meaning I'm going to take this 3, 1, write it as a column next to each of the columns of matrix B. So the 3, 1 bottom row, I'm going to write as a column. I'm going to write it next to the 4, 1. And I'm going to write it next to the 5, 2. So I took the row in A next to the column in B, the row in A next to the column in B. Now I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to go 3 times 4 is 12. 1 times 1 is 1. I'm going to add 12 and 1 and get 13. That's in the bottom row of my answer, so I'm going to put it first in my bottom row. Done with this. One more computation to do. The last computation for this is 3 times 5, which is 15, and 1 times 2, which is 2. Add those numbers together and get 17. This should be my answer to problem 15. Let me see if I can do that on my calculator. And on my calculator, I'm just using the matrix names. So on my calculator, to do problem 15, 
it's just second matrix names A, second matrix names B. So that's matrix A times matrix B. And when I hit enter, hopefully I see, oh, look at this, I see negative 4, negative 2, 13, and 17. I made a mistake somewhere here. Where was my mistake? I forgot this lovely negative sign right here. This is supposed to be negative 2 right there. So this should have been negative 10. And that would have made this negative 2. So it's way safer doing this on your calculator. If I didn't check my work right there, then I would have had a wrong answer because I couldn't take this row negative 2, 4. I didn't write it with the negative sign. Because I dropped the negative sign, my answer in that one position was wrong. Everything else I did OK. All right, so on another sheet of paper, I'm going to do matrix B times matrix A, just so you can start to get used to these. So for problem 16, I'm going to do matrix B times matrix A. To do matrix B times matrix A, I need to know what matrix B is. And matrix B is 4, 5, 1, and 2. And matrix A is negative 2, 4, 3, and 1. First thing I'm going to do is take the first column of B and write it next to each of the columns of A. So I'm going to take the first row of B, write it as a column, write it next to the first column of A, and write it as a column, write it next to the second column of A with a little time sign between. So this is going to be the top row in my answer. So I'm going to go 4 times negative 2 is negative 8. 5 times 3 is 15. When I add those because they have opposite signs, I subtract and take the sign of the larger. 7 in my answer is going to be in the top row. So when I go to write my answer, I'm starting out getting the top row. The first number in my top row is going to be the number 7. The next multiplication that I multiplied up, 4 times 4 is 16, 5 times 1 is 5, 16 plus 5 is 21. Done with the top row, I'm going to move on to the bottom row and get the bottom row of my answer. Do the same thing. I'm going to take this bottom row and write it next to each of the columns in A. So I'm going to take the bottom row of B write it next to the negative 2 and 3, take the bottom row of B, write it next to the 4 and 1. And I'm going to multiply. 1 times negative 2 is negative 2. 2 times 3 is 6. I'm going to combine those. They have opposite signs, so I have to subtract. I get a positive 4. goes in the bottom row of my answer. And then 1 times 4 is 4. 2 times 1 is 2. Combine those. goes in the bottom row of my answer. I claim that's the answer. So this is what BA equals to. And you'll notice on the last problem, if I could actually find the last problem on the sheet here, when I did AB, look at that. AB was negative 4, negative 2, 13, 17. BA is 7, 21, 4, and 6. AB and BA rarely equal each other. Let me check this on my calculator to make sure I didn't make a horrible mistake. So second matrix names B first and then enter. Then second matrix names A and then hit enter. I see 7, 21, 4, and 6. I'm perfectly comfortable with this. All right, so I'm going to move on and do EF and we're going to do FA. Heck, let me do your problem 17, because you're not required to do these by hand on the test. Let me show you everything you need to do anyway. So I'm going to do 17. And 17 takes says do matrix F, 1, negative 2, 5, 2, 6, 7. And multiply that by matrix A, negative 2, 4, 3, 1. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the top row of F. This is my F here. This is my A. I'm going to take the top row of F and write it next to each of the columns of A. So I'm going to take this and put it next to each one of these. And the top row of F is going to give me the top row of my answer. So for my answer, I'm going to go 1, negative 2, 
times, that's a negative 2, 4, so times negative 2, 4, and then 1, negative 2, times 4, 1. First multiplication, 1 times negative 2 is negative 2. Negative 2 times 4 is negative 8. The numbers have the same signs, so I'm going to add them and keep them negative. Next multiplication, 1 times 4 is 4. Negative 2 times 1 is negative 2. Have opposite signs, I subtract them. In my answer, the top row of my answer is going to have negative 10 and 2. Done with the top row of f, don't need to look at it again. I'm going to move on to the middle row of f. The middle row of f is going to give me the middle row of my answer. So for my answer, moving on to the middle row, I'm going to take the middle row of f, write it as a column, write it next to the negative 2, 3, and write that 5, 2 next to the 4, 1. So I'm always taking a row, writing it vertically, and next to each column. And now I'm going to multiply across. 5 times negative 2 is negative 10. 2 times 3 is 6, positive 6. Numbers have opposite signs, so I subtract and get the sign of larger and get negative 4. Next multiplication, 5 times 4 is 20. 2 times 1 is 2. Same signs, add them and get 22. The middle row of my answer is going to have a negative 4 and a positive 22. Done with the middle row of f. Now onto the bottom row of f, which is going to give me the bottom row of my answer. I'm going to take the 6, 7, write it as a column, write it next to negative 2, 3. Then I'm going to take the 6, 7, write it as a column, write it next to 4, 1. First multiplication, 6 times negative 2 is negative 12. 7 times 3 is 21. Since those numbers have opposite signs, I subtract. I'm going to get positive 9. Next, 6 times 4 is 24. 7 times 1 is 7. Add those and get 31. The bottom row of my answer is going to have a 9 and a 31. So I took each row and wrote it as a column next to each column. First row, twice. The first row, 1, negative 2, wrote it next to... Whoa, whoa, whoa. One, negative two. I suppose this is wrong. <coughs> this first one I did one, negative two. I'm supposed to put it next to negative two, three. So let me fix this before I check on my calculator. So when I did one, negative two and put it next to here, I don't know why I wrote a four there. I should have went one times negative two is negative two. Negative two times three is negative six. This should give me a negative eight where I have this negative ten. Sorry about making a mistake. They're almost inevitable when you do these matrix operations like this. Then 1, negative 2 times 4, 1. I did that okay. Then I did 5, 2 times negative 2, 3. 5, 2 times 4, 1. Then 6, 7 times negative 2, 3. 6, 7 times 4, 1. I think this is the answer. You're not responsible for doing matrix multiplication by hand on the test. If you just use your calculator, I'm completely content with that. Let me check this on my calculator by going clear, second matrix, go down to matrix F and hit enter, and then second matrix, hit enter on matrix A, so there's matrix F times matrix A, and I see negative 8, 2, negative 4, 22, 9, and 31. The reason that was wrong initially is because I wrote the wrong number down. I couldn't copy well enough and that gets to be a big, these things get really tedious and if you do one little mistake it makes horrible things happen. Alright, so I'm going to walk through 19 with you just in case you want to do it by hand. Um, it's a monster. So to do 19 we want to do matrix C times matrix D. So for 19 supposed to do matrix C which is 1, 0, negative 1, 7, 2, 4, 2, 3, negative 5, times matrix D, which is 3, 2, 0, 4, negative 1, 
three. I better go super slow. These are this is a monster problem. Double checking to make sure I have the matrices written down right, because if I don't have them written down right, then nothing good can happen. So I'm going to use the top row of C to get the top row of my answer. So I'm going to take that row and write it next to each column of D. So that row is 1, 0, and negative 1. I'm going to write it next to the 3, 4, 1. And then I'm going to write that 1, 0, negative 1 next to the 2, negative 1, negative 5. And then I'm going to take that 1, 0, negative 1, multiply it by 0, 3, 6. And then I'm going to multiply across. I'm going to go 1 times 3, 0 times 4, negative 1 times 1. Combine all those numbers. The only numbers that are going to combine are the top and the bottom, and that will give me a positive 2. Next set of multiplication, 1 times 2 is 2. 0 times minus 1 is 0. Minus 1 times minus 5 is 5. Add those numbers up and get 7. Last bit. 1 times 0 is 0, 0 times 3 is 0, negative 1 times 6 is negative 6. Add those up and get negative 6. This is going to be the top row of my answer. So when I go to write my answer, it's going to have 2, 7, negative 6 along the top row. So my answer is going to have a 2, a 7, and a negative 6 on the top row. Done with the top row of C, assuming I haven't made a mistake. And now I'm going to move on to the middle row of C. The middle row of C is going to give me the middle row in my answer. So now I'm going to take the middle row of C. It's going to give me the middle row of my answer. I'm going to write 7, 2, 4 as a column next to 3, 4, 1 first, which is the first column in D. And then I'm going to take the same 7, 2, 4, multiply it by 2, negative 1, negative 5. And then I'll take this 7, 2, 4 times 0, 3, 6. Multiply across. 7 times 3 is 21. 2 times 4 is 8. 4 times 1 is 4. 21 plus 8 is 29 plus 4 is 33. Next group over. 7 times 2 is 14. 2 times minus 1 is minus 2. 4 times minus 5 is minus 20. Time for my calculator. 14 minus 2 minus 20 gives me negative 8. Last one. 7 times 0 is 0. 2 times 3 is 6. 4 times 6 is 24. 0 plus 6 plus 24 is 30. The middle row of my answer is going to have 33 minus 8 and 30 in it. So 33 minus 8 and 30 in the middle row of my answer for problem 19. All right, so I'm done with the top row, done with the middle row, on to the bottom row. This will be the bottom row of my answer. I'm going to take that and write it three times vertically. So for the bottom row, I need to write... 2, 3, negative 5 next to 3, 4, 1. Then 2, 3, negative 5 next to 2, negative 1, negative 5. And then 2, 3, negative 5 next to 0, 3, 6. And again, if you write one number down wrong, unfortunately that spot will be wrong. Now I'm going to multiply across 2 times 3 is 6, 3 times 4 is 12, negative, one, negative 5 times 1 is negative 5, 6 plus 12 minus 5 equals 13. Next column, 2 times 2 is 4, 3 times negative 1 is 3, negative 5 times negative 5 is positive 25, 4 minus 3 plus 25 equals 26. Last, 2 times 0 is 0, 3 times 3 is 9, negative 5 times 6 is negative 30. I think that comes out to negative 21. The bottom row of my answer is going to have 13, 26, and negative 21. 13, 
26 and negative 21. So I get my answers one row at a time. I got the top row, 2, 7, negative 6. The middle row, 33, negative 8, and 30. The bottom row, 13, 26, and negative 21. Let me check on my calculator. I'm a bit worried to do this, but got to be done. So let me do CD on my calculator, because that's what I think I just computed. It's so a second matrix, go down to C and hit enter, and then second matrix, go down to D and hit enter, 2, 7, negative 6, 33, negative 8, 30, 13, 26, negative 21. Shocking that it's actually correct. All right. We're going to run into some problems on these next ones. So let me do 22 and save 21 for you. So to do 22, I need to do matrix A, which is negative 2, 4, 3, 1, times matrix D, which is 3, 2, 0, 4, negative 1, 3, 1, negative 5, 6. Step 1, take the top row of A, write it as a column, write it next to each of the columns in D. So I'm going to go for the top row of my answer. I'm going to go negative 2, 4 times 3, 4, 1. Negative 2, 4 times 2, negative 1, negative 5. And negative 2, 4 times 0, 3, 6. They have these stray numbers down here that don't have anything to line up with. This is not going to be possible. In order to be able to multiply the number of columns of A, has to equal the number of rows of D. A has two columns, D has three rows, it doesn't work. So the answer for number 22 can't be multiplied. Just like the sum matrices can't be added, sum matrices can't be multiplied. You're not responsible for doing matrix multiplication by hand. So we need to know what our calculator is going to show for this. When I go to do AD on my calculator, I do second matrix A, second matrix names D. When I hit enter, I get the same dimension mismatch for a different reason. But you can tell it wasn't going to work because when I started writing A in columns, that I had this stray number that it wouldn't match up. That bottom row wouldn't fit. So it's not possible. Similarly, for your BC, if you do your BC, do second matrix B and then second matrix C, you're going to get the same error. That's not going to be possible either. All right, so just two more problems, one each. I'm going to try to do AF. You're going to try to do FE. Oh, heck, let me do FE because that's actually possible. So let's, my AF isn't possible, it's not so interesting. Let me do FE for you guys. So FE for number 23 is, it's 1, negative 2, 5, 2, 6, 7, times E, which is negative 3, 2, 2, 5, negative 1, 3, First thing I'm going to do is get the top row of my answer by taking that and writing it next to each of the columns. So for problem 23, my top row and my answer, I'm going to take this 1, negative 2, write it next to negative 3, 5. Take that 1, negative 2, write it next to 2, negative 1. 1, negative 2, write it next to 2, 3. And each time I'm going to multiply, so and add 1 times negative 3 is negative 3, negative 2 times 5 is negative 10, same signs, add them. Next grouping, 1 times 2 is 2, negative 2 times negative 1 is 2, add those and get 4. Last grouping, 1 times 2 is 2, negative 2 times 3 is negative 6. Add those and get negative 4. In my answer, the top row is going to be negative 13, 4, negative 4. So for my answer, the top row is going to be negative 13, 4, and negative 4. Top row of F gives me the top row of my answer.
middle row of f gives me the middle row of my answer. So now I'm going to move on to the middle row. Done with the top row. I'm going to focus on the middle row. So I'm going to write 5, 2 next to negative 3, 5. 5, 2 next to 2, negative 1. And 5, 2 next to 2, 3. First, 5 times negative 3 is negative 15. 2 times 5 is 10. Opposite signs, so I subtract. Next one, 5 times 2 is 10. 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. Opposite signs, I subtract. Last one, 5 times 2 is 10. 2 times 3 is 6. Same signs, I add. That's the middle row in my answer. So in the middle row of my answer, I'm going to write negative 5, 8, and 16. So negative 5, 8, and 16. Almost done. And it's the last problem for the section. Now I'm going to do the bottom row by taking the bottom row of F. So the bottom row of my answer, I'm going to take the 6, 7 right next to the negative 3, 5. I'm going to take the 6, 7 right next to the 2, negative 1. And I'm going to take the 6, 7 right next to the 2, 3. First one's going to give me negative 18 and positive 35. Negative 18 plus 35 is 17. Then I get 12 and minus 7, which will give me 5. And then 12 and 21, which will give me 33 for the bottom row of my answer, 17, 5, and 33. So I just did each row one at a time next to each of the columns and just took my numbers in order. I multiplied and add or subtracted if the signs were different. Let me double check now that this is what F times E will give me. So I'm going to go clear second matrix, go down to F and hit enter, and then second matrix, go down to E and hit enter. Then hit enter again, I see negative 13, 4, negative 4, negative 5, 8, 16, 17, 5, and 33. On the last problem, if I was going to do problem 24, to do A times F on problem 24, I have to go matrix A, which is negative 2, 4, 3, 1, times matrix F which is 1, negative 2, 5, 2, 6, 7. The first thing I would do on number 24 is take that and write it next to each of the columns of F. So I'd take the row, I'd go negative 2, 4 times 1, 5, 6, and I'd go negative 2, 4 times negative 2, 2, 7. You can see that these don't match up, so this is going to be not possible. These can't be multiplied. For an answer, I could say it's not possible, or I could say they can't be multiplied. And when I go to do this on my calculator, I'm going to get a dimension mismatch error. So if I try to do AF on my calculator, clear this out, second matrix names A, second matrix names F. When I hit enter, I'm going to get some sort of error message because the, the multiplication won't work. So that feels like a good stopping point. I only have like five seconds between the before the video hiccups. So this is all you're responsible for in this section. Matrix multiplication you can do by hand. Scalar multiplication, in addition, you should do matrix multiplication with your... Huh, sorry, I tried to talk too fast because the time was running out. Matrix multiplication, this kind of stuff, you can completely do by your calculator. Scalar multiplication, you can do on your calculator if you care to, but quite honestly, you can do that by hand. Similarly, addition and subtraction, I prefer if you did those by hand. But for this whole section, because there's not a lot of applications that you're going to do in, in higher classes, unless you're a math major, that are going to involve these operations for matrices. If you do everything on the test from this section using your calculator, I'm okay with that. Um, but I'd like to see the addition, subtraction, and scalar multiplication by hand. It'd be impressive to see the regular multiplication by hand, but that's kind of up to you if you don't want to put the time into learning the regular multiplication. It's not the most important skill that we teach. In fact, at ASU, if you took college algebra, they don't do matrices in their college algebra course. So you're getting a little bit 
we're getting bonus coverage here at GCC, I guess.